Caleb Warren and I have crafted a theory of humor that we call the benign violation theory. And the benign violation theory builds on work by Tom Veach and integrates existing humor theories to predict that humor occurs when and only when three conditions are satisfied. A situation's a violation, the situation's benign, and both of those appraisals occur simultaneously. A violation is anything that threatens the way you believe the world ought to be. Simply put, something seems wrong about the situation. Violations can take many forms, uh, from violations like tickling and play fighting, so attacks, to violations of linguistic norms, conventions, or rules that occur in, in puns, wordplay. There are also many ways to make a violation benign. Um, we've studied three. Uh, one way you make a violation benign is to make it distant, such as if it happens to someone else, happened long ago, or just doesn't seem real. Another way that you make a violation benign is to not be strongly committed to the violated norm. So when a church gives away a Hummer SUV to a member of the congregation, that violates a norm about how churches should behave, that they shouldn't act like commercial entities promoting using promotions like raffles and giveaways to attract members. And who is it is more likely to find this to be benign, but people who are not strongly committed to the sanctity of the church. And so in our studies, for instance, we find that people who are not religious find that funnier than people who are religious. People who are religious find this to be just upsetting or disgusting. Another way that you can make a violation benign is to have some alternative interpretation of the violation that, so that it can be seen as acceptable or okay in some way. And this is well illustrated by tickling and play fighting. So both tickling and play fighting are mock attacks. They're attacks that are threatening but also harmless. So one of the, the good things about, about the benign violation theory is that in addition to predicting what is funny, it also predicts what is not funny and it also distinguishes between the two meanings of the term not funny. So one set of situations that are not funny are those that are purely benign, those that aren't threatening, that don't have a violation. So for instance, you can't tickle yourself. There's nothing threatening about that situation, and thus you don't laugh. Another way a situation is not funny is if it's strictly a violation, or what we call a malign violation. That is, there's nothing okay or acceptable about the situation. So if a stranger walked up to you on the street and tried to tickle you, it's unlikely you would laugh. You would just be terrified, probably, by that situation. So in this paper, we take moral violations, clearly situations that are wrong and threatening to the way you believe the world ought to be, and we investigate some of the ways that you can make them benign and hence funny. So in one of our studies, we used a news story uh, about Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, who claimed in an interview that he snorted, among other things, his dead father's ashes. So in our scenario, we used this basic idea, but we looked at how it might be benign and how that situation could be funny. How could it become funny? Well, one thing that we did was we added a line to that scenario that said that Keith's father said, do whatever you want with my ashes. And what we found was that our participants who read about this scenario, many were disgusted and upset by this, but a large proportion also found the scenario amusing. And what was interesting and consistent with the benign violation theory was that those people who laughed and smiled endorsed the fact that this situation was both wrong in their eyes and also not wrong. <laughs>